Hey guys, it's Kristen and welcome to my channel. This is going to be my gym wrap up. So I didn't read heavy in the month of June. I've been going through it a little, a little bit with my mental health. And all of these books were audiobooks. I just couldn't bring myself to pick up a physical book or even my Kindle. I It's just the mood. The first book I read in June was Squad by Mariah McCarthy. This is about a cheerleader who kind of gets out ostracized by her cheer squad. Um, she starts hanging out with her brother and his friends who do live action role playing, which is actually what sold me on starting this book. But I was a little bit disappointed because uh, I was like 50 something percent of the way through the book and LARPing was still nowhere to be found. It was mentioned a very tiny little bit. It was a three star read for me. It was light and easy and available. <laughs> the next book I read was City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. This is book two in the Mortal Instruments. Two for two. This is not looking good for this series for me because this book made me really, really uncomfortable. I just, it, mm, nope. Mm -mm. The next book I read in June was Black Girl Unlimited, The Remarkable Story of a Teenage Wizard. This was the book club pick for the Top Shelf Society, uh, which is headed by Kristen at Perks of a Bookflower totally awesome group of ladies who run a book club. They are on Goodreads and anyway, Black Girl Unlimited was such a good story. Um, it broke my heart. I like, I had too many feelings. It's about Echo Brown who essentially is learning how to deal with super shitty situations throughout her life. It's, yeah, no, it, I read it. <laughs> the next four books I read by the same author, one was a co-write, um, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, The Upside of Unrequited, Lay on the Offbeat, and What If It's Us. Uh, which she co-wrote with Adam Silvera. So looking back, I kind of feel like I could see the signs that I was not going to be my normal self, like mentally, um, just because I was looking, I wasn't like into reading like I, like I have been. Um, and I was just looking for filler. Um, easy, light stories to get me through whatever. Um, and that's why I picked up, I picked up first Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I had seen it a lot around Booktube and Bookstagram and whatever, and my uncle actually mentioned to me not that long ago that they had watched the movie Love, Simon, and they really enjoyed it, and so I was like, okay, well... Let's give this a shot. Right off the bat, I wasn't in love with this book. It was a three star for me. Um, I mean, it's a good story. It's just, I didn't, it wasn't spectacular. Um, it's about Simon who is, uh, he's gay and he's not out and then he gets blackmailed into helping this other dude who wants something from him. You know, I don't, we know that I'm not good with the synopsis and the summaries. Um, so yeah, again, I wasn't super into this book or this story. It was what it was. I listened to it really passively while I was cleaning. Um, 
and it was easy to finish. I think that's why I just continued with it. It was easy to finish. So after I finished this book, I was like, okay, let's, I still needed light, easy reads. And then I saw that there was more books in this universe. So I was like, let's check them out. Uh, I read Lay on the Offbeat and I ended up absolutely loving this book. And I don't know if that's a bias on my part because I am a chubby, freckled, bisexual. Um, and I just saw myself like in Leia, like Leia, Leia, Leia. It's Leia. I'm. I know it's Leia. Um, but yeah. So I saw myself in Leia. Um, like in high school, like. High school Leah is high school Kristen. Like there's there's no there's no separation there. Um, I really really enjoyed this book. Um, and then having read this book, looking back on Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, I had more appreciation for Simon and his story. Uh, just as like as intermingled as these characters are, it gave me more, more love for them. Coming off of Lay on the Offbeat, I went straight into The Upside of Unrequited. Uh, this is about Molly. It's been a minute. I did most of this listening in the beginning of the month. Um, okay, so this is about a girl who has had 27 crushes but never enacted on them. She has a twin who is a lesbian and she's trying to set her up. Uh, and they are, they are this character, this, this whole universe is intertwined. Um, so she ends up getting a crush on some dude she works with but doesn't really do anything about it as per usual until the very end when he's kind of into somebody else and like she gets jealous and it's very teen relatable like I have known all of these emotions throughout these three books and I think that's why I love them so much is because I can look back on my youth and be and like just feel like I was heard or at least not alone in how I felt when I was younger. Okay, so the last book I read in the month of June was What If It's Us, which was by um, was written by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. It is about um, two boys in the city of New York. Uh, one just got over a breakup, one's never been in a relationship, and it was just such a lovely story. Again, super relatable characters, uh, and a super, super realistic ending, which I absolutely adored about this particular story. Um, and I want to just say that I did not read Albertalli's books for the LGBTQ representation. I know that there are better books for that purpose. I read them because I needed something light to read to just get me through the month. Um, and they ended up really being really relatable to me and just looking back on who I was when I was younger which I think, I don't know, it's kind of a cool thing, I guess. <sighs> so that's everything that I read in June. Uh, I hope you had a good reading month, and I will see you in another video.